This is 10 News. And a welcome back here on this Saturday. We're on top of all the major news of the morning. I'm Robert Santos. And I'm Vanessa Van Hefty. Yeah, we've been checking out a little bit of uh, marine layer yeah, over there, like isn't it? Yeah, it looks like a little hazy, but we know this is not going to be sticking around for too long. Let's check in with 10 News meteorologist Kristen Keel. I can't get over just that downtown shot. That's something yeah, we, it's really we cool. have the marine layer. We don't often see that vantage point. So you see all of the sunshine on the other cameras, but yeah, this downtown camera it shows just exactly where the problem is. So downtown Coronado, Imperial Beach, that's where our trouble spots are this morning. But you can see nothing but sunshine over in Poway, Otay Mountain, Borrego Springs. We're all doing good. It's just really that southwest portion of the county right now. So our temperatures are pretty mild this morning, 59 at the coast and 50 inland, 50s in the mountains and deserts as well. But we are going to heat up quickly. We'll see that marine layer burning off by late morning. In the 9 o'clock hour, already in the upper 60s, those are where our high temperatures would normally be in this time of the season, but we're going to top out at 79 at the coast, 10 to 15 degrees above average inland today. We'll already be in the 70s in the nine o'clock hour and then topping out near 90. I'm calling it 89 for you. Coming up, I'm pinpointing when we'll be back in the 70s there in those inland communities. A violent crash sent a car into flames. At one point, a person was trapped inside. The 10 News breaking news tracker was live at the scene. This was on 54th Street in Oak Park just last night. Police tell us the car hit multiple parked vehicles and a tree coming very close to hitting a house. The driver was taken to the hospital. He has ma major injuries and you can see the damage on the car is very significant. It's ex suspected that he was driving at a high rate of speed. We'll bring you any new information this morning as we get it. And breaking overnight, a man is dead after crashing his dirt bike into a parked car. This happened last night on Camonito Cantalena. This is in uh, Rancho Bernardo. Uh, police say that he was riding down the street without a helmet. He lost control, then hit a fire hydrant and crashed into the parked car. Uh, paramedics took him to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. A developing story. President Donald Trump says many people will soon be getting a massive tax cut. He says the tax cut all part of a tax reform package that he plans to unveil next week. He says the cuts will affect people and businesses and that they would be larger than any other tax cut. This regulatory reduction is a first step toward a tax reform that reduces rates, provides relief to our middle class and lowers our business tax which is one of the highest in the world. Package expected to be released Wednesday or shortly after. And the president is sending a new message to young immigrants in the country illegally. He's telling them they can rest easy. Uh, the president now saying that dreamers will not be targets for deportation under his immigration policies. He told the Associated Press that his administration is only after criminals. The president also said he will still be constructing a border wall along the U.S.-Mexico border, but questions over funding for it still remain. New today, Vice President Mike Pence continues his trip to Australia, addressing the refugee resettlement agreement. Pence says that the United States will honor the agreement that was made with Australia in the final days of the Obama administration. This comes even though President Donald Trump calls the deal dumb. Under this deal, the U.S. would take up to 1,250 refugees housed in Australia in detention camps, but they'll have to go through an intense U.S. vetting process first. Some new information on the gunman who killed a police officer and attacked three others at the Champs-Élysées in Paris. Uh, authorities say the accused shooter, Karim Sharouf, had a long criminal record. They say he spent 14 years in prison for attacking officers in the past, and he was arrested again in February, but he was released. They say he showed no signs of radicalization in those instances. But after Thursday's attack, security found a note praising ISIS, which is believed to have fallen out of his pocket. Uh, he also had uh, ad addresses of police stations, more weapons, and a copy of the Quran in his car. A developing story this morning, a local Navy SEAL arrested on child porn charges. Navy Petty Officer First Class Gregory Kyle Searden was on temporary assignment in Virginia Beach. Now, according to these court documents, he's accused of raping a woman after a night of drinking. When NCIS agents searched his phone, they reportedly found nearly 80 images of child porn. So far, no charges have been filed in that case. It's believed that he lived at this home in Claremont. His neighbors didn't really know him, they say. Searden is behind bars in San Diego. U.S. Marshals are trying to extradite him 
to Virginia. A transgender trailblazer right here in the city, protecting the public with the San Diego Police Department. Yeah, talking only to 10 News about the struggle she's faced most recently from members of the transgender community. 10 News reporter Emily Thode shows us how she's choosing to rise above it. I came out after having eight years on the police department. Christine Garcia is the first transgender police officer with the San Diego Police Department. Ever since I was a teenager up to the day that I actually came out, I had always went home on my days off or um, from school or whatever, and I, I dressed up as a girl because that's how I felt comfortable. Garcia was born Christopher, got married, had two kids, but always felt like Christine. I hit it with everything that I possibly could. I wrestled for 12 years. I was a good wrestler, became a cop. Uh, before I became a cop, I was a firefighter. In 2015, Garcia transitioned from male to female. Garcia's wife, supportive. I got a flood of like five or 600 emails and 300 text messages the next day from officers just telling me, I support you, you're a good cop and that's all that matters. But not everyone has her back. Last Friday at San Diego's LGBT Center. This was at the Trans Day of Empowerment. A small group holding signs, booing her. And they wanted to protest me getting an award because I was simply a cop. And in their view that all cops are oppressors. We want her to continue doing what she's doing and that these anti-cop activists do not represent the community as a whole. Piper Smith helped block the protesters. Yeah. Garcia got a standing ovation. I've done a lot of work to make sure that our community is respected. LGBT people call her cell 24 seven. If they don't feel comfortable reporting a crime to the police, uh, to any patrol officer, they're allowed to call my phone. And I have responded from home to take a report of hate crimes from them, to talk to them about complaints that they've had against other officers. She's seen progress, but I, I do dream of the day that I don't need this cell phone. Emily Thode, 10 News. Garcia will be honored again next month during the LGBT Center's Harvey Milk Diversity Breakfast. Happening today, people uh, will head to the historic Chicano Park for the park's 47th celebration. Uh, the public there will get to experience uh, traditional music and dance, and they'll also get to hear speakers who represent different Chicano Park committees. It all starts at 10 o'clock this morning, and it's all for free. All right, also happening today, thousands of people heading out to Oceanside for the annual March of Dimes, a big event uh, that uh, raises money and awareness for infant health. 10 News, a proud sponsor of this event every year. And our 10 News reporter, Gracie Aguilar, is live there this morning where setup has been underway for quite some time. Good morning, Gracia. Good morning, Vanessa. Yeah, setup is still going on right now. There's a little bit more people out here getting their booth set up. Registration table is already set up, waiting for people to get down here in about 30 minutes. That's when registration will be open. We've got the stage up here where people will be up speaking. They've got music here, so it's going to be a good time. But um, it's not just about having fun. It's also for a good cause. To tell us a little bit more about what the March of Dimes is and what this March for Babies Walk is, is Alex. She's the executive uh, director of the program. Can you tell us a little bit more about this. Good morning. Definitely. Uh, the mission of the March of Dimes is to improve the health of babies in San Diego and across the country. So this walk and our March for Babies walks across the country that happen this weekend and next weekend are all trying to fund our mission. We really want to make an impact. A lot of people associate this with uh, premature babies. Can you tell us uh, how important that is to have awareness for them? Definitely. One in ten babies is born premature in the U.S. and for a lot of those cases we don't know why. So we're really trying to determine the cause. A lot of our research right now is around uh, looking for the uh, the causes of prematurity. Uh, we also try and prevent birth defects and make sure the baby makes it out of the hospital safely and alive. Perfect. Thank you so much. So, so far they've raised a little bit more than $27,000 hoping to raise much more than that. Registration again starts at 7. The walk itself starts at 8 o'clock right next to the Oceanside Ocean. Reporting in Oceanside, Gracia Aguilar, 10 News. Weather rate certified San Diego's most accurate forecast. This is 10 News Pinpoint Weather. Okay, you can see the sun is already out there, so it's going to be warming up fast, isn't it? Oh, yeah, but it will be chilly for the actual walk. It's going to be after that that we get a little toasty. Take a look at your planner for the March for Babies. At 7 a.m., we're going to see 57 degrees, 59 when the walk gets going at 8 a.m. And then for the food and fun at 10 a.m., if you want to head out there for that portion of it, it's going to be 60 
3 degrees and we will see lots of sunshine for you. Taking a live look in Oceanside, all clear there. We're not having any problems with visibility in that part of the county, but look at downtown right now. We are seeing those clouds consuming the high rises, so that's the trouble spot right now for visibility. We'll show you that here on the visibility map. When you look at this map with me, the smaller the number, the worse the visibility. This measures miles of visibility, so we're at two miles downtown, seven miles in Chula Vista, so the South Bay being impacted by this Coronado Imperial Beach. So those are the trouble spots, but it does seem to be improving. We were at last check at one mile of visibility downtown and now we're up to two. It will burn off quickly anyway today because we are going to get pretty toasty. It's already 59 degrees in San Diego, so these temperatures are pretty mild this morning. 52 in Poway, 59 in Chula Vista, and 56 up in Vista. High pressure taking control, keeping us warm and dry. We don't have any rain in the forecast on this seven day. It's going to be 79 degrees today at the coast. So these temperatures that we're looking at today across the county, about 10 to 20 degrees above average. It'll be cooler tomorrow for the second half of the weekend with a high of 73. We will continue to see some low clouds clinging to the coast this week, so be watching out for that. Make sure you're checking the forecast before you hit the roads. 75 on Thursday. That's when we're going to warm back up a little bit to uh, close the work week, but by Friday we're going to see 72 for our inland communities heating up to 89 today, so very toasty. Make sure you're drinking lots of water. You may even want to reschedule your outdoor plans. Any activities you wanted to do today, maybe push them to tomorrow because it's only going to be a high of 76 and then we'll keep it in the 70s until Thursday and then we'll climb back into the 80s briefly before 78 on Friday for the mountains 77 today may be a good place to escape to if you live inland for the deserts oh 96. So if you got a hike today inland just cancel it. Do it yeah, tomorrow. Do it tomorrow. Post it early. Watch Netflix <laughs> yeah, today. That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen.